Hello and welcome. Hi, I'm Dave. This tutorial is part of a beginner CSS series. I'll be using the Chrome web browser, the Visual Studio Code editor, and the live server extension for Visual Studio Code to view the web page. There are links to these tools, starter code files, and all resources in the description below. Let's move on to CSS display types. You can see I have Visual Studio Code here on the left, and I have an HTML file. And in the HTML file, I have a body element, a main element then that is surrounding the other elements. And inside this main element, I have two paragraphs. And in the second paragraph, I'm using a span element. And that span element has a class on it of opposite around the word another. You can also see I've commented out a nav element that contains an unordered list that we will get to later. I've also got a basic CSS style sheet here. And inside this, I'm pulling in a font from Google Fonts, as we learned in the typography lesson. And I've applied a basic font size and font family then to the body element here in the CSS. So that's what we see over here in the right in Chrome. And I'm using the live server extension, so you'll see our changes automatically over here in the browser as soon as we save our CSS. Now the display property in CSS relates back to something we learned in the beginning HTML course, and that is about block level elements versus inline level elements. Now the paragraphs that you saw we've included in the HTML are block level elements, and they have some default properties. So let's look at those first. I'm going to apply a basic style here to the paragraph element, and we'll say background-color, and set that to, let's do a light gray. And when I save, you can see the light gray extends all the way across the page. So it has a 100% width by default. Automatically, block level elements have a default 100% width, and they stack on top of each other, as we see here. Now, they've also got some default margin as well, which is why you see space between the paragraphs. But this is important to know. So every time we use another block level element, it doesn't have to be a paragraph. It could be any element that is a block element. Then they will stack on top of each other. Now, when I say 100% width, I mean of what is available to them. It's not always 100% of the viewport here that we see. So let's look at an example of that. And that's why I have a main element that the paragraphs are inside of. The main element is also a block level element. So let's set the background color for it to a different color so we can see it. Get something kind of ugly that stands out here just for this example. So let's go with aqua. If we set that, you can see we are covering part of the main element with the paragraphs, but the part that you can see where there is margin, it turned aqua. So now we could take away this background color and you could see aqua across the whole thing. So now that we've done that, let's also go ahead and change the width of the main element. So let's set it to a width of 50%. And now you can see the paragraphs do not extend all the way across our page. They are limited to their container, their parent element, which is the main element. So they do have a 100% width default setting, but it's a width of what they are given. So I say they have 100% width of what they are given. It's not necessarily 100% of the page. And of course, we could return this background color once again so we could see exactly how much room they're taking up and let's say light gray again and save and once again we see they're taking up 100 percent of that main element with block level elements we can also apply margin and padding and height or anything like that to all four sides so let's say margin and i'll say 100 pixels on the top and bottom and 50 pixels on each side, and if we save, that definitely changed everything because now this has a 100 pixel margin up here, and then we've added mar extra margin in between the paragraphs, and then you don't even see the margin that's underneath as well. But we can do that to block level elements, but this is where some of the change comes in when we switch over to an inline level element. So I'm going to remove that, and let's remove the main styles as well. So we're back to spanning the full page. And remember, I put a span element around the word another, which is an inline level element. 
and that doesn't cause a new line break. So let's go ahead and style that opposite class that was applied to that span element. Just to make it stand out, we'll start with a different background color. And I'll make this a flat black. And then we'll use a color that is not quite full white, white smoke. And now you can see we've styled this element and it is just surrounding the word another. So our span element has a class of opposite and we changed the color for the background and the text. But let's see what we can and can't do with an inline element. And so now let's go ahead and try to put a margin on the top of 100 pixels. And you can see nothing changes. We can't apply a top or bottom margin to a inline element. Likewise, we'll try a different one. Let's go with height, 200 pixels. It doesn't change. Once again, height cannot be applied. And padding applies just a little differently. So let's look at that and let's go with one rem. And it looks like everything is as, as expected here where we have a one rem padding top bottom left and right however if we go ahead and increase that let's say four rem look what happens it overlaps the above paragraph and we probably wouldn't want that so now let's apply the display property and we've talked about this being already as a default in line and then of course paragraphs default to block and many other elements as well, like the main element we talked about. However, there is another option, and that is inline dash block. And let's see what happens when we apply that to our opposite class. Now our padding is still applied, but it's not overlapping the other paragraph, so it is now respecting the top and the bottom. Likewise, if we come back and apply that margin, and let's just say margin dash top, it could be bottom as well, but we'll just put 100 pixels for the top, and that worked as well. Now you can see we have extra space here. And again, this is applying just to that span element, so not to the full paragraph itself. And now we could even add the height that we applied earlier that didn't work, and we say 200 pixels. And now our span element just got a lot taller. So the inline block property value is kind of a hybrid here because we stayed in line in our paragraph. This didn't create a new line like block would. And at the same time, it now allows some properties to be applied that normally wouldn't apply to the inline display. So to quickly recap, block level elements stack on top of each other and always create a new line. Inline elements do not stack on top of each other and do not create a new line. Block level elements automatically have a 100% width of whatever they are given. If they're not inside of something that is limiting their width, they will be the full width of the page. Inline level elements only take up the width of their content, of course, unless we put extra padding on them and then it has a little bit more width here because of that padding. And then when we switch to inline block, we get kind of a hybrid here where we can keep the content in line, but we can go ahead and apply a top and bottom margin or a height and other things that typically only block level elements have. So when would inline block be handy? This could be handy if we were trying to turn a link into a button, and sometimes people do style links as buttons, and then you could, of course, have a row of those. And likewise, it could be something like turning a list into a row instead of a vertical list, so it would be horizontal. So let's look at an example of that, and I'm going to go back to the index.html, going to select our paragraphs and press Shift, Alt, and the letter A to comment those out and then select our nav element with the unordered list in it. Once again, shift alt and the letter A to uncomment that and now I'll save. And now we see a basic list with three links over here to the right. And they say intro, portfolio, and projects, something that we might use as a menu on a portfolio website. So here we have the nav element and then an unordered list and three list items inside. And then of course each list item is an anchor link, so a hypertext link, and those are inline elements. However, the list items themselves 
our block level elements and each one is taking up 100% width of what they are given right now. Let's go back to the CSS and apply some styles here. So I'm going to select these styles, the paragraph and the opposite class and go ahead and delete those and save once again so we can start fresh. And now let's apply something to the unordered list first. And we'll start with a list style type and then we'll say none and that removes those bullets that we have. After that you can see we're still moved over to the right so we do have some default padding on the list so let's say padding dash left and we'll just set that to zero and then we'll save again and then after that let's go ahead and say text dash align right. Oh what happened to my CSS, I've got an extra line in there. You can see what happened now. So we know we have 100% width, and if we change the background color here, we can really see that in action. So let's say background color, let's go back to our light gray, and you can see we've got 100% width going on once again, and when we sent the text align right, we sent all of our links, all of our list items, over to the right. And finally, let's apply a margin of zero to the unordered list as well. And now you can see it pulled it up closer to the top of the page. We could actually apply a CSS reset as well. So let's do that. And that will put everything flush with the edges of the page. So we have margin of zero, padding of zero, and then box sizing will set to border box and save. And you could refer back to our box model module where we covered all of this and setting a basic CSS reset. But now you can see we are flush with the edges of the browser and our links are once again all to the right. Now let's go ahead and change this background color and let's just change it to black and save. And now we don't see the links as well, but we'll change that in just a little bit. For the list items, let's change those now and we'll say display inline dash block instead of their default of block and now when we save you can see they are all side by side in horizontal order instead of top to bottom as they would be with the block display. Now let's apply some margin between each one of them and what we can do here instead of saying top right bottom left as we typically would with the shorthand for margin we can just say margin in line and this will just apply to the left and the right so I'll say 0.5 rem and let's see how that looks. Now that looks okay and we need a little bit of extra space maybe over here on the right so let's change the padding setting here we had padding left of 0 for the unordered list and that's okay but maybe we just want to apply a little padding all the way around so maybe 0.5 rem everywhere on the unordered list, top, bottom, right, and left. Oh, and that is just set to padding dash left right now, so let's go ahead and make that shorthand for padding and apply it to all four areas, top, right, bottom, and left. Now that looks a little bit better. So what we need to do now is just apply some color and maybe some hover styles for our links. So let's say link and then the anchor tag. So this will only apply to anchor tags inside of the list item. I said link, list item in the anchor tag. And now we'll say color, we'll make them white. And then we'll have a text decoration of none. And when we save, we now see the words in white with no underlines. After that, let's scroll for a little more room and we'll say list item, anchor tag, hover pseudo class and once again list item anchor tag focus pseudo class and for that let's just change the text decoration instead of the color let's just go back to the underline style so when we hover over they now show as links now there are other display values that we could use and we're going to have separate modules on the display type of flex and the display type of grid. And when we do that, we'll learn how to complete our menu bar that might have something over here on the left as well. But before we go, there's one other value I do want to cover. And instead of inline block, block or just inline, you might have a value of none. And look what happens. 
all the list items just disappeared. So let's go ahead and change that back so they show up. And maybe we want our entire bar to disappear. And right now that is an unordered list. So let's say display and none up here. And now it's entirely gone. And that is exactly what happens. It completely removes it from the document. Now we would still see it over here in our HTML, but as far as the browser is concerned, when it interprets the code, the unordered list is not there. Now we rarely want to use this, and that is because it removes it from that document flow. And that means anyone using assistive technology screen reader would not be able to read anything there. There are other ways to remove something from being visible, from actually being viewed on the page, but still have it in the document flow where access accessibility um, might be still available. And so we'll cover that in the future as well. But right now, just know that display none is a possibility. Remember to keep striving for progress over perfection. And a little progress every day will go a very long way. Please give this video a like if it's helped you. And thank you for watching and subscribing. You're helping my channel grow. Have a great day, and let's write more code together very soon.